You guys have probably all seen the video of the big screens, afterlife productions and some like AI human fusions doing their dances. There's a new track out now by Anima and Rebuke, very interesting combination. And their new track is called Siren. Today we want to have a look at how the main synth and siren work. Let's go. So this is what we want to talk about today and I don't want to talk about kick and bass or anything like that. I really just want to talk about the synth because the synth design is so amazing in this track by Anima and Rebuke and we're gonna start of course with the big 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 lead here. So there's so many things to talk about. Where should we start? Um, maybe we start by just looking at the MIDI and there's something that was very very weird to me I was just trying out a little bit and I noticed that it's not just the usual arpeggiator gets automated. You can see that there is still my arpeggiator with the automation, but I turned it off because it didn't sound exactly the same. And then I was looking and checking and listening and I realized that the notes are not actually all on the grid. So in the end, what my pattern looks like if I go to 16th is something like this. I mean... <laughs> So what's important to understand is that this whole pattern revolves around triolic ideas, right? If you go to triolic, we will understand it much more, e much easier, right? You can see that those are triolic eighth. So we're switching between those two, right? One twelfth, one six, but. Um, yeah, they don't seem to be on the grid all the time. Like, it felt a little weird to me when I did it on the beat, especially also because of the bass line. So what I did here is something like this. I put this as quantization only in the beginning, and then I took down the intensity just a little bit so that I'm not quantizing completely, um, but still a little bit. Um, so yeah, this, this is essentially it. I don't really know much to say about this other than it just sounds cool it honestly sounds better than just going from let's say 132nd note to 112th this is the automation that I had I think yeah you can see it here right 112, 16, 112, 16 and so on and so forth 132nd but it somehow it wasn't really it wasn't really the thing so like this it's much better <laughs> So then maybe we can get this out of the way from the very beginning. There is a pitch wheel modulation, right? Moving the pitch wheel of the synth. And that's a huge difference compared to just doing this, for example, right? Whatever it would be. Uh, because there's not actually the, the moment where you hear the, the, that a different note is playing on a different pitch, but rather it feels like one flowy wave of we're on this pitch now we go down to this one and now we go back up whichever the pitches are so what i did is i put serum to minus two plus two this is where it's actually always anyways and then i have this here the pitch bend and i did it like this there's also different shapes like this one for example this one is the same this one is a bit different um and they never they never go really beyond minus two so that's uh, that's a thing to say, right? You will hear the pitch. Also going back up again here. But you don't see it in the notes, right? And there's also no modulation in the synth happening or so. It's really just a pitch bend. You can see it here. Okay, 
so now maybe let's talk about the sound a little bit and for this one I was really trying to do a lot in Serum but some effects I needed to do in the box here. So this is what we sound like without all the effects. And while the, the basic character is there, um, the effects do matter a lot. So what's the thing here? The sound is kind of... It sounds kind of easy, it's like saw based, that's for sure. And um, I was trying out different like wave shape kind of modulation ideas, right? Like this asymmetrical pulse wave modulation. I was trying some detuning, whatever. And this one just appe was appealing the most to me. I'm not sure if it's 100% correct, to be honest, but um, it really, like, it, it kind of catches the character of the sound. So we have this very thin pulse wave modulated layer. We have this one, which is the main layer. We don't use any unison here, it's all mono. Keep that in mind. And we have this uh, minus two sub layer that for some reason I really wanted to have in there because it gave the, the synth somebody. And I could also see in the spectrum analyzer, right, that there is some sub frequencies in the original. So this is why we have it here. And if you download the preset, which you can for free in the description, <laughs> <laughs> in the description of course then <laughs> right you can you can do this whichever way you want to put it up turn it down use a different wave shape whatever there's also some noise also very important for the sound to give it this very very clean and high frequency character if we look at the envelope just a little bit lower sustain right not not too much of a big deal <laughs> And just a little bit of release as well. But we are in mono legato, which means no release is gonna lap over the next note. As soon as a new note is playing, the old release is cancelled. <laughs> Would be very weird with all those close notes. We just want this release to have a little bit of, like, this little bit of tail in the end. And that's what I mean. The sound is not too complicated actually in Serum, because the only thing I'm using here is... Um, the Haas effect once again, you've heard it in many videos before, it's delaying one channel to the other, left and right, no feedback, 100% mix, no filter, and therefore we are very stereo all of a sudden. Right, so I wanted to do this instead of unison because unison always creates those many voices and this is not the character that we wanted for this sound. So now let's see, so here we have a sidechain, right? Not special, sidechaining to this. Um, so right here it's not working and here it will start to work. Um, then we have this big chain with dry echo and reverb. We're gonna talk about this in a minute, but first let's check out the saturator and equalizer. Because this one really shapes the sound where we want it to be. First of all, we have the saturator to make it all a bit thicker. And then the EQ really takes away all the frequencies that we actually don't need, that are unnecessary, like the very, very high end. We don't need this 10K and above feeling scratchiness <laughs> in the sound. Why would we? Because later on we will have like hi-hats and cymbals and all that that will fill up this space. And it's nice if we can kind of extend our frequency spectrum every now and then. Um, throughout the course of the track, right? So then also we do the same, we take away a little bit in the low area and then I was boosting just a bit and cutting just a bit here. So like 500, a little lower, 1K, 1.5K, a little higher, right? This is just what I think sounded good here. Yes, and now let's go to this dry echo reverb thing. So dry, of course, you heard that before. What does the echo sound like? It sidechained um, to the original a little bit here through the ducking. Um, and then it's just quarter notes. So we have a very long echo, right? This is, I think, what they wanted when they did the track to have this very long repeating echo in those big breaks. Here you have this fill sound, of course, but still, it's a long break. Also, here it's a long break. 
here on the beat as well. So you want this very long echo and quarter notes, perfect for that. Then we have the reverb. Very strong. In the original it was, I think, maybe a little quieter. So we can go down here, of course. Um, I think like this it all sounded very nice together. Very epic, very dramatic. You can also mix down the reverb a little bit. And there we go. Yes, so that's it on the sound, right? You can see that it, it's actually not the most complicated sound, but it's just very, very well executed. And like you, you had the basic ideas and then you put them into the, into the track with maximum value. Very, very well done. And I mean, once again, just a great, great production here by Anima and this time Rebuko also, who is also a very, very good producer coming from the peak time area, more or less. So, um, yeah, very interesting. Next up, I want to talk about this bass plug. You might have seen it in the videos, right, with this, with the siren girl and then she knocks when those sounds are coming. <laughs> So we want this very, very dark and knocky feeling. Um, you can get this for as well for free, right? In the description, we're gonna have a look at it really, really quick. We only have like this. Okay, so we have two things. We have to talk about it like this. We have two things. One is oscillator A plus the sub, which is disabled, but like in volume, but it modulates here. If we don't have that, it's just this. And we have a little bit of pitch envelope here on as well, but just a little bit. Doesn't make the, the biggest difference, I think. Just adding a little bit of punch in the beginning. Then we have the second oscillator, which is the knock kind of. So this one is for tonal, tonal <laughs> stuff, and this one is for the knock, right? The dynamics of the sound. We have a long pitch envelope also minus one and therefore we get a lot of knockiness and both of them together create this feeling right adding a little bit of distortion here a lot actually with the diode 2 100% mix in and we use the filter of the distortion that's very very important it's always a good thing if you have a sound and you distort a little bit use the filter and the distortion in serum it's a game changer trust me <laughs> We also automate the gain of this high shelf a little bit to get just a little more clickiness, take away the very, very low bass, compression once again to get out the transient a little more, and then just a little bit of reverb in the end. So get the sound for yourself to check it out and use it in your own productions. Now we want to jump to the last sound of this video, which is this one. Very, very weird sound, very Rebook-esque. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a technique that we know from Psytrance or maybe even hardcore. It's like heavily based on how long is a note. So therefore, what we need to do in the synth is to have an envelope that is like almost 100% sustain or 100% sustain. It shouldn't be lower than this. This I'm just doing because I only have Right, I only have those 62 milliseconds here because I just wanted a little more plug, right? So 62 milliseconds and we are almost 2 dB quieter, but in general, it's kind of the same loud, the same volume all the time, right? So I'm using the same wavetable as in the other sound because I think they have a lot of similarities, just no other oscillators and this time I want unison. Unison really makes a huge difference here. creates this super soft feeling that we have within the sound. And then taking away a little bit of the, of the lows, right? Boosting in the high mids, a little bit of reverb that is also automated, becoming louder. Uh, yeah, but the note length is actually what matters. And I wanna check this out with you guys. And therefore what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like this first. So we only have little plugs. <laughs> So 
So you can hear that depending on the length of the note, it sounds different because some notes, some note length more sound like a pluck and some really have this kind of long and sustained feeling. This one, for example. So like this, you can create a rhythm. Also have a kick maybe. Also very interesting with this last hit on the kick. Really like this one. So this rhythm is just altered a little bit. Um, if we compare the two, we can see it's mainly around here. But just to show you what we can do with such a sound, I want to make just another pattern. Like something, I'm gonna do something random, right? So what I would do is I would just add a lot of those closed notes and then I would add some open ones and see how I like the rhythm. Maybe like this and then another one here. And this one we could also do a little faster. Cool. Yeah, you know, like, this is how it works, essentially. If you're using this sound for yourself, you should do it like this. And, of course, infinite options once again here. Um, but it's very interesting to use this technique. We know it from Psytrance sounds. Maybe we can do something like this in the future, but we also know it from hardcore and like this hard techno screaming sounds. It's the same technique, all depending on the note length. And if you wanna learn more about this, you should actually check out this video of uh, my Rebuild of Alignments um, track where he's using this, but on a screaming like soaring lead sound also very cool um, but this is it for today on the anima and rebuke um, synth rebuild and i hope this was helpful for you um, i hope to see you in the next video and until then have a good time and keep making music